British Strong Ale has quite a wide variety of characteristics. It can be strong enough that it'll really just be a sipping beer, or it can be something quite sessionable. It can have a deep, rich colour, or be light amber. And it can be something that is cellared and aged, or a beer that's enjoyed young. Lots of decisions to make. Let's brew one. I'm Martin Keane taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And which British strong ale have I elected to go for? Well, after brewing a bunch of stouts and high gravity beers, I've elected to brew a beer that is less strong. So a 5.7% ABV as opposed to up to 8%. And this one is really gonna focus on being fresh, easy drinking and pleasantly hopped. So I'm building a beer here with an original gravity of 1061. The style guidelines say it's okay to go all the way up to 1080 if you want to brew a much stronger version of this beer. Now my base malt for this is Maris Otter Pale Malt. That is 84% of my grist. So that's gonna give me a nice sort of biscuity, toasty backbone to this beer. Then I'm gonna add in four specialty malts each at 4%. So starting with Crystal 45 at 4%, which I seem to be adding into all of my British beers these days, and also 4% of Amber Malt. Then I'm gonna add 4% of Aromatic Malt for that smooth and toasty characteristics that you get from that. And then for body and for the head retention, I'm gonna add 4% of Flaked Barley. You want to know what I'm into We can start with a blindfold You know the love goes deep, baby Tell me what you info I'm over the hill and under the brakes Over the pain and under the faith Over the past, I wash it away Tell me if you're looking to stay, yeah Mashing this one at 152 Fahrenheit, 67 Celsius In the stateside I know you got dreams we could chase, right? I want to know what it tastes like it's hard kept, but it's more than a promise. The way you move got me leaning all on it. I want to see you tomorrow. Talk to me. Now, I have in my basement here five chest freezers. And if they were left to their own devices, they would be freezing everything. I use a temperature controller to regulate how cold those things get. And I've got a bunch of different temperature controllers here to take a look at including some brand new ones, which I'm going to do an unboxing. Woohoo! This is YouTube unboxing videos, right? So the basic idea of a, a temperature controller is you have this controller element here where you set the desired temperature that you want to get something to. You can either want it to get lower, so chill it, or depending on what you plug it into, it can go higher as well. And then there is a temperature probe that typically comes with that. There's a temperature probe right here for this one. Now, when I started out, I bought these temperature controllers from Johnson Controls. At the time, this was pretty much the only thing I could see that was available, but it's these controllers that finally enabled me to set a temperature and to make sure that my chest freezer stayed to that temperature by inserting the probe inside of the chest freezer. But I want to show you some of these controllers I've got here because I think they all do something a little bit different. So let's start with the Inkbird controller because I have two of these in operation in my brewery already. And what I really like about these is they allow both heating and cooling. So there are two separate plugs here. So what I do is I plug in my chest freezer into the cooling plug and then in the heating, I plug this into a space heater that I've put inside of my, um, inside of my chest freezer. And that way, if I need to warm something up, I'm able to do that as well. So that's the Inkbird. These things are really good. And um, yeah, I've, I've been using these for, for quite a while. Okay, now let's have a look at 
some of the new stuff. This temperature controller was supplied to me by Anvil Brewing and this is a little bit different in that well there's a lot less to it. There's the temperature probe and then there's the controller itself and this controller actually plugs directly into a power outlet. So rather than running to a power outlet like I would do with the Inkbird, I can plug this directly into the power outlet from here. On this side I then plug in my chest freezer and then I can set my temperature to cool to. So yeah, nice compact solution and I'm actually going to be using this in an upcoming brew day. Two more. These never out of the box, so looking forward to opening these. These are from Digi10, they were supplied to me by Digi10 and let's take a look at this one in particular is pretty interesting because it contains a remote control. So if we open this one up, here is the temperature controller which seems to be nice and compact and much like the, the Anvil one, this one plugs directly into a power outlet so that's nice and tidy and then it's also coming with a remote control. Also in here there should be a temperature probe somewhere, yep here it is. So we can take the temperature probe and plug this into the controller. Now what I typically do with these probes is I put them in a beer bottle that is filled with something alcoholic, normally vodka or rum so that it won't freeze and that way I get a bit more of an accurate reading of liquid temperature rather than just the, out, the ambient air temperature. So okay so this is my probe, this plugs in to the temperature controller here and then on this remote control I can set the temperature that I want this to be and I can also see the current temperature as well. So this is kind of the lazy man solution if I don't want to walk all the way over to my chest freezer to change the temperature or just to check on it. I've got a remote control here for it. This one's also really inexpensive this is $30 on Amazon and there's a link to this and all of the temperature controllers that I'm looking at in the description of this video and it does have the ability to switch between heating or cooling depending upon what you plug into this. Now this one is uh, I think eight dollars more expensive than the one with the remote control but this temperature controller from Digitan is more of a traditional controller that plugs into the walls. So we've got the controller here and then the output so we can plug in our heat source or our cooling source, the plug that goes into the wall and then the temperature probe. So again it's just a case of plugging the temperature probe in to the controller, putting this in the inside the fermentation chamber, plugging it in and setting the temperature. So I've now got a heck of a lot of choice when it comes to temperature controllers. Maybe I need some new chest freezers to go with them. Now the hops for this beer, I'm using Fuggle as the bittering hop. So I am going to get about 33 IBU from my bittering hop. In a five gallon batch you throw in two Fuggle. And then at five minutes left for flavor and aroma, that's where I'm adding in East Kent Golding. This will contribute about another four IBU. And if you're brewing five gallons, that's one bag. hit my original gravity of 1061 and I'm going to be adding this flocculent beast. This is Y East 1968 London ESB. It is super lumpy. It also has a fairly low attenuation so I'm only expecting this beer to get down to a final gravity of 1018 which will leave just a touch of sweetness in the beer. Monday is busy on Tuesday I feel dizzy Wednesday is so tiring, Thursday and expiring, the weekend comes around, I got a red and Monday on my mind. Alright, tasting time. Welcome Lauren. 
so British Strong Ale. Um, let's take a look at the, the color of this one. I was curious to see how this was gonna come out. Um, if it was gonna be dark, uh, super dark or not. I was trying to go for a little bit more of an amber color. What do you think? Um, it is amber. Yeah, looking. yeah, it's sort of a deep orange color. Yeah. Let's see what we get on the aroma on this one. Multi. Yeah, very multi. Multi, biscuity maybe. Um, well, let's give this one a try. You go first, what do you think about the taste? Well, first of all, I feel like Robin Hood and his merry men like drinking out of this glass. <laughs> <laughs> um, Taste-wise, it has a sweet taste to it. Yeah, <laughs> like, it does. There's, there's a sweetness here that I wasn't expecting. No. So couldn't get anything on the smell of sweetness, but there's a um, very much a multi-sweet character to this yeah. beer. Now, I am a fan of bitters and I really enjoyed the best bitter and the ESB that we did but this is definitely much sweeter than those beers. Yeah I like the ESB, the ESB was mm. good. Um, yeah I actually really like this one and I know my dad would, your would dad, love this one. Yeah your dad would like that one. <laughs> All right well everything you need for this beer is in the description as always and we're going to continue with the British theme uh, next week with something a little bit older. Oh, fun. Mm. Well, so, cheers. cheers.